This is Dungeness, and between the nuclear power station, the airport, and the army firing range, is an unlikely project to bring the short-haired bumblebee back to life in Britain. Last year, they released 51 of these creatures from Sweden around the land here, but none have been seen since because we had such atrocious weather. So this summer, conservationists are trying again. Bumblebees are just fabulous. When the first queens come out in the spring and they're a bit dozy and slow and they're, they're busy drinking from a flower, you can literally go up and stroke them. And, you know, they're, they're just wonderful. They're just amazing little creatures. We're using this bee as a flagship species of our habitat decline. By recreating habitat for bumblebees, you're recreating an ecosystem that's largely been lost. So we're going to benefit the bees and we're going to benefit everything else. So in this fridge we have queen short-haired bumblebees and they're kept in these small vials here. So it basically keeps them cool, they are kept at 4 to 5 degrees. We feed them then each night with an artificial nectar solution. So in the top end here, what we do is we take out the brown side and then on a cotton bud we fill that with artificial nectar solution, pop it through, and the queen can actually stick out her tongue and feed off of that. Tell me about the quarantine that they have to go through. So once we collect the queens, they must go through quarantine, which lasts for two weeks, and that's done at Royal Holloway University of London, where the disease bumblebee expert actually is. We can't release any queens that have diseases or parasites. And how many did you lose this year? We actually lost about 50%, which is quite high, but then this is what bumblebees are faced with, and that's true for all bumblebee species. Diseases do regulate a population. Basically, all, all we're going to do is just release them onto the flower so they don't have to fly too far. Now, which way is she facing? I'll let you out this way, dear. What's the appeal of bumblebees for you? What induces such passion? I'm fascinated with wildlife generally, um, and the insects in particular, and I think the, the bumblebee is such a charismatic insect. You know, it is so, so gentle and harmless as well. Do you think the bees look in better shape this year? Yes, I, I feel they're, they're cleaner and healthier somehow. Maybe it's just an impression, but I th they, and they seemed calmer this time as well. Maybe they were a little bit cooler, I don't know, but um, it's nice to just be able to see them as you release them to just get on a flower and warm up. Nikki, tell me about the distinguishing characteristics of the short-haired bumblebee. She doesn't look very stripy. She doesn't look as much stripy as some of our more other common bumblebees. <laughs> What's characteristic about this bee is actually the short hair. That's why she's called the short hair bumblebee. Um, if you see her thorax, she actually has no hair there whatsoever. This actually means she's called thermophilic, which means she's a bit more of a heat-loving bumblebee. So that's why she was mainly more restricted to mid-England. So that's really the temperature range that she would go to. So she's got her head deep in a flower there. Is she collecting pollen or nectar at this point? So she's sticking her tongue out and sucking up the nectar like a straw. You can see when her head comes out, it's actually dusted all along the back with pollen. I can see it now. She's got this dusting, just, yep, just as you described the there. Yeah, that's all the pollen there. So she ha this uh, flower produces yellow pollen, so you can see that all at the back of the head. It must mean an awful lot when each bee is so hard won to bring it over here. It's absolutely amazing to see them here, to see them forage and to see them act as we'd hoped they would act. I'm hugely optimistic. I've been accused of optimism before. Um, it, you know, last year's results don't look great, um, but it is, this is a long-term project. We, we knew that last year wasn't the end of it, and we know this year isn't the end of it. And we've got a good week's weather to come this week, so we know that they will get a decent chance to settle in. This is really exciting. <laughs> I'm really going to look forward to letting her go, so I'm just going to warm her up for a bit, see if that helps. So I've just taken open the end of the vial where the short-haired bumblebee is facing, and I'm hoping she will now climb up. Apparently they like climbing up more than climbing down. Climb up. Oh, she's coming out. She's ready to go. 
So the short-haired bumblebee is now on the top of the yellow flag iris. It's buried its head inside the flower. It's getting lots of nectar and pollen all over it as well. This is a really good sign. So hopefully it's getting enough energy to head off and start prospecting for nest sites. Because what we want is this female queen. Obviously, she's been pre-mated, so um, she's ready to lay eggs. We want her to establish a nest. And then hopefully this species can really get re-established in Britain once again.